Hello there. I wanted to read to you something really special that kind of spoke to my heart. Uh, this is a, a devotional by Tony Evans called For a Purpose, and I love it. There was one that I thought I wanted to share with you because it kind of just says so many things. How we view ourselves, how we think God views us, and, um, and we know many times the way we view ourselves is so much lower than what God actually sees us. He sees hope in our lives. And um, as we go through things in life, we can tend to lose hope if we're not in him or we're not <clears throat> staying close to him and so forth. But before we get started, let's go ahead and pray. Father, I just thank you for this time and just that you see us in such a, a way that just, it brings you joy. You love us. Yes, Father, we grieve you many times, but you still love us. You were willing to die for us. So Lord, now I pray that you would bless your word and thank you for your unconditional love toward us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, this one is called God's Masterpiece. <clears throat> There it is. And if you ever get this book, it's really good. Tony Evans called for a purpose, and it's a devotional. Okay. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepare, prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And that's in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. The great Italian sculptor, painter, architect, and poet, Michelangelo, we all know who he is. Well, you know, we've heard of him. In every, block, in every block of marble, I see a statue as a plane as though it stood before me, shaped and perfect in attitude and action. I have only to hew away the rough walls that imprison the lovely impartion to reveal it to the other eyes as mine see it. So when he saw something, he already saw it done, you know? And it says, in an imperfect jagged, <clears throat> excuse me, Bulky and unshaped block of marble. Michelangelo saw the treasure within. He once described this process. I saw the angel in the marble and carved it until I set him free. He could do this because Michelangelo didn't see what the marble was. He saw what the marble would be. He saw a masterpiece. This is similar to how God sees you on every step of the path to your destiny. You are a masterpiece. We read about this in the book of Ephesians. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we would walk in them. So, he sees us complete in Christ. If we have trusted Christ as our Savior, if you believe that he died on the cross for your sins and he, were, he was buried and he rose again and you accepted that payment for you, because many people, remember, can say, that, oh yeah, I believe he died, but you have to make it your salvation. I believe he died for me. And I believe that by putting my faith and trust in him, I can have eternal life. So if you have done that, we, we now have the righteousness of Christ in our lives. And he sees us. In Psalms 139, it says that he knows our down settings, our uprising. He knows our thoughts are far off. He compasses our path and our lying down, and he's acquainted with all our ways. He knows what's going to make us happy. He knows what's going to make us mad. He knows what's going to make us down. He knows what's going to cause confusion. He knows everything about us, and yet he sees the complete. He sees the masterpiece, and we need to remember that when we get off track and we start thinking that it depends on us and that we're in control. We are not in control. He is. He is in control. This verse is referring to you and me and all other children of God. The Greek word translated workmanship in this verse is poimia, poimia, poima, where from whence we also get our English word poem. The word denotes a word of art as a masterpiece. You have, you have been made as a work of God. You weren't created on the assembly line, a random object thrown together. Okay, you know, like when you have an assembly line, okay, head, head, thing, you know, everybody, they're all like an assembly line. They're all the same. No, you were created uniquely by God. 
regardless of how you feel, regardless of what you may be going through, you are uniquely created by God. And you know what? <clears throat> you have to remember, we have an enemy. And he is a liar. He is a destroyer. He's a thief. And he, he comes to seek, to, to steal, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But God says, no, but I have come to bring you life. And I, I come to bring you truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So you need to remember that you are created for the glory of God. And you are unique. And God has a very special plan for your life. Regardless of what Satan puts in there, you remind him. You just remind him of the promises of God and what he's done for you and what the Lord has done for you. And you know, you have to do that by staying in his word every day. And you know how I am. I kind of encourage each other to stay in his word every day because faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. You're not going, we can, you know, we're not like the world where they say, okay, you know, we're all, let's all think positive thoughts. Let's all, you know, all that, that's good. But let's get back to the word of God. And it says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. He loves you with an everlasting love. And underneath are his everlasting arms. And with his loving kindness, he draws us to himself. Those are the promises that he gives us. So, <clears throat> he went to work intentionally and delicately, working on your talents, your looks, whether you like them or not, your looks. God, in heaven, it's all going to come together. Right now, we compare ourselves among ourselves, which is not right, but we do it. We compare ourselves to the way our talents, oh, I wish I had that talent, oh, I wish I had those eyes, oh, I wish I had that body, or I wish I had this, or I wish I had that. We're always going to be that way. That's why in Scripture he tells us, you know, they that compare themselves among themselves are not wise. And it's a constant battle, I know. We all do it, all of us. <clears throat> Excuse me. He gave you your skills, allowing even you to have your imperfections. Even with your imperfections, we all have it. We all have areas that we struggle with or we, you know, we think, oh, I hate the way I am like this. Or I hate, you know, but those are the things sometimes God uses to humble us and to draw us closer to him, all right? So even in our imperfections, we're his masterpiece. Isn't that wonderful? He still loves us. And you are his masterpiece. You are God's handiwork. What's more is you were made with a purpose. Don't let Satan tell you you have no purpose. Don't let man tell you you have no purpose. You are created for your heavenly Father to bring glory to him with your life. Even when you fail, you can still bring glory to God. When we come to him humbly, and he will be glorified in our lives. So remember that. And that purpose includes more than mere, merely showcasing your talents. It's not just showing your talents, no. It involves influencing your world for good by fulfilling your destiny in all the places and ways God has positioned you to do so. Where you are now, if you're a wife, if you're single, if you're uh, a grandma, whatever your position is right now that God has put you in, that's where he has put you. And you ask him and you stay close to him. You say, Lord, what can I do today, just today, to bring glory and honor to you? And remember, you meditate, you find scripture, and you meditate on his word. What does meditate? You just think about it. Even if it's one or two verses. Like I tell you, my favorite verse, Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious for nothing. I can get anxious. Okay, Lord, uh, this is not happening or this is not happening. This just happened. That's going to happen. If this doesn't happen, it, God says, no, be anxious for nothing, but in everything. And I know that is hard. Oh my gosh, I know that's hard. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God and the peace of God that passes all understanding. 
can keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. I've been through trials just like you. And it is so hard. When you think you're just at the end, you know? He brings you through. He provides abundantly more than you could ever ask or think. He walks before us. He's behind us. He's following us. He's surrounding us. We have a mighty God. And don't you forget it. Please stay in his word. He loves you so, so much. I am praying for you. And remember to, to keep your eyes on the prize, which is the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Seek to bless others. Don't just live for yourself. That's not where it's all about. When you're depressed and down, even if you're hanging on by your nail, just believe that God loves you. Just say Jesus, and that's it. You have a wonderful evening. I love you, and I can't wait to see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.